Hey there, I'm Chris Pugh. Got Pierre Holland with me for the Canton Repository. Um, hey, we're the Ohioans, so we um, we have a Steelers podcast, but we also do uh, podcasting about the Browns, Bengals, and Buckeyes. So uh, this is our kind of our Bengals thought for the week. How you doing tonight, Peter? I'm doing fine. How you doing, Chris? Good. Hey, um, it's been a long preseason. The starters for the Bengals didn't play that much, especially in offense. But, man, the regular season's starting. Uh, Bengals take on the Steelers. Uh, 1 o'clock in Cincinnati. Um, they defend their AFC title. Uh, it's going to be interesting. The Steelers, uh, they handled uh, pretty easily both games last year. Uh, the Steelers bring in some new faces. No more Big Ben. They got Mitch Trubisky, who's slated to start for the Steelers. Um, offense has got some question marks. They're pretty young, but the defense looks pretty good. And it'll be interesting to see how the Bengals react uh, with their first game of the season, uh, see how the offense does, and see how this new-look defense does. Um, what do you think about the game, just as a quick overview? Um, you think the Bengals have rust? Uh, um you know, a lot of questions are, hey, you know, they came from nowhere to win the AFC. Uh, how do they keep from uh, either overlooking the Steelers or just uh, making sure they're not rusty as they begin a new year? Well, if you can look at rust, I mean, you can look at it from both sides. Both of them have really, it's the first week, so I wouldn't know if Rice was going to play in the park. Uh, I think it's going to be. Definitely, I think one thing what we gotta learn about with the Pittsburgh Steelers, they're always gonna come, come here to play. They're all um, that's the Mike Tomlin way that if you're not gonna bring it every Sunday, then you have no business being on the field. So they're they're gonna bring it, and I'm sure Cincinnati as well is going to. Uh, I can say that, but uh, I one thing that I'm definitely gonna pay attention to is. Cincinnati defense, because I don't think Cincinnati defense has not really got their proper respect because we get caught up with Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, and the offense. Um, but I am definitely want to see how they're going to match up against Pittsburgh's defense. I mean, Pittsburgh's offense with Mitchell Bisky at quarterback and Najee Harris in the backfield. And not to mention, the offensive line, from what I'm hearing, is terrible. Is pretty bad on the defensive line, and this and this is that Bengals got a strong front. So with Mitch Trubisky at quarterback, would they be able to protect them? So that will be the question if you're a Steelers fan. Yeah, a lot of question marks on the offensive line for the Steelers. Uh, they kind of revamped it, and they got a new offensive line coach. Everything I'm hearing, um, it just you know the transition's been kind of tough. Um, James Daniels was their big free agent pickup from Chicago, and Daniels was kind of struggling too. Um, yeah, that's going to be a huge question. Um, since I was able to frustrate the Steelers last year with their uh, pass rush, and they put uh, Ben Roethlisberger in some tough spots last year, um, th- they got to take advantage of it. Uh, the Steelers' offense is going to be interesting. Um, Mr. Trubisky's average, uh, we just talked about the Browns game, he, he reminds me kind of like a Jacoby Brissett. He's not terrible, but he's not super great. I But I think the Bengals need to frustrate him with their pass rush, throw him off killer, uh, put him in passing downs. Um, you know, I, I think if the Steelers could run the ball a lot to Najee Harris, it could be a tough day for the Bengals. Uh, I think if they could put him in third longs, uh, make Mitch Trubisky beat you, it's going to be tough. Now, I will tell you, um, Pierre, it's interesting uh, the Steelers, you know, um, George Pickens, um, you know, is pretty highly touted. They, they come back with a, like uh, a healthy uh, Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool. Um, they've got good weapons. I, oh, I think where, where they can attack the Bengals is if they can put Trubisky under pressure. Now, Trubisky is a lot quicker than Big Ben is. But when Trubisky was under pressure from the Steelers games I was watching the preseason, he made some mistakes. So I, I think if they can do that, uh, the Bengals be in good shape on defense. Um, I, I think you look at Hill, uh, their top uh, draft pick, I think he's going to solidify uh, some of the pass coverage too. So, you know, if they can frustrate Trubisky and cover good on defense, I, I think they'll be in good shape. 
Um, again, stop the run. If they can stop Najee Harris, put the Steelers in tough positions, they're going to be in good shape on defense. Um, you know, here's going to be a question. Um, think back to the Super Bowl last year. Uh, the Bengals' offensive line looked really rough. Uh, the Rams really frustrated him, and that's what helped spark the Rams' comeback. Uh, Bengals got a lot of new additions on offense line. On paper, looks amazing. Uh, but they're going to be challenged. <clears throat> the Steelers always have had a good pass rush. Right now, everybody's healthy. That should pose a challenge. Uh, what do you think it's going to look like for a new Bengals offense line to face that challenge in Week 1? It will definitely be an improvement compared to last year. Uh, adding the addition of uh, Leo Collins to protect the right side. So, I could definitely see the improve, uh, at least in a passing attack, on uh, now that you got, well, at least for the passing protection. So, I, I, I would definitely expect them to, the offensive line to play at a better level than they, than they were last year. That was pretty much the issue. Everything else was fine with the Bengals, except the offensive line couldn't protect Joe Burrow. And sometimes Joe Burrow, when he's under pressure, that was probably one of his weak points, is he will hold the ball too long when the, when you got defenders running at you. So, and the Pittsburgh Steelers, they, they got guys, they always got, always have legitimate um, defensive front. Uh, they, not not as not as uh, elite over the years, but they always have guys that are solid enough. Um, even right now with um, Cameron Hayward, um, they got a they got a rookie defensive tackle that I like, DeMarvin Leo. Um, so they and uh, oh, not to mention the, the best one, T.J. Watt. Uh, so that will definitely be um, definitely going to be something to watch um, for sure of uh, how the Bengals offense line will stack up again. Uh, um, the Steelers front front four, at least the front seven particularly. Well, and you got to look at this too. You, you mentioned a couple of good guys. Uh, here's a couple of our wild cards for the Steelers. Uh, Ty Lulu, um, when he's healthy, great run defender. Defender, when he's healthy though, he got hurt uh, second game last year. He missed the rest of the year. Uh, another guy to be familiar with Bengals fans, Larry Ogunjobi. Uh, he played some for the Browns. He played last year for the Bengals. He looked really good, but he got hurt. Um, he's supposedly healthy now. Uh, if they can get o- Ogunjobi back, they'll be in good shape too. Um, I, I also think uh, too. Uh, uh, just kind of under the radar for each pick, he's good. But some of the other moves the Steelers made kind of went under the radar. Miles Jack, a good defense, a linebacker last year for the Jaguars. He's not a Steeler. He's looked really good in the preseason. Uh, the big question on the Steelers defense: Devin Bush, who came in uh, just being this uh, supposedly amazing linebacker, and he's been hurt and he's struggled over the past couple of years too. So I, I really think, I mean, on paper, the Bengals definitely have a better team. I think this line play, who wins that ball of the offense line uh, on defense line, both sides of the ball, are really going to make a huge difference on who wins this game. Sure. sure. It's, so that's definitely going to be uh, a major match of the wild. Like, who's who's going to go to step up? Who's going to stack up against going against CJ White as well as with the Bengals? And then if you look on the opposite end, there's other offensive line, linemen for the field are going to go against guys like um, Hubbard, guys like um, guys like Trey Hendrickson, guys like DJ yeah. Reader. They're, they're, they're pretty great up front themselves. So, um, so that definitely for sure will be um, a big matchup for uh, the for both teams, and which which of um, which front will be the dominant team? Big question in my mind: Can the Bengals stay focused? I uh, did a great job of keeping that focus to get through a tough AFC playoff, uh, make it to the Super Bowl. I, I'll tell you, Peter. Here's where I think the Steelers could get the Bengals. If you overlook the Steelers, you're, you're in trouble. Uh, look at last year. The Steelers opened up the season at Buffalo. Buffalo was a huge up-and-coming team. Uh, Buffalo didn't make the Super Bowl last year, but a lot of high hopes for Buffalo. Petra came in, frustrated Buffalo, stole a game to open the season. Now, 
by the end of the year, Buffalo is definitely a better team than Pittsburgh. Um, I, I'd like to see how Cincinnati responds. Are, are they going to be focused? Are, are they not going to be rusty? Um, it's game one of the year. I mean, you're right. We talked about this earlier with Ohio State. Don't overreact after one game. But I tell you, it's going to be a good test to see where Cincinnati is at to see how they play. If they can play consistent, play good, put away Pittsburgh, I got a lot of faith in Cincinnati. I hope to see that when I look at a team like the Bengals. It kind of goes back to what I said earlier. Uh, I'm, I'm never going to be the type of going to count out the Pittsburgh Steelers because they're well coached. If you're not going to prepare against a Mike Thomas team, you have no basis on the field. He's going to get them ready no matter what. So, so we'll we'll see how this how this year's team are uh, going to look like. This is a new group of guys that uh, Mike Thomas has to play with. Um, then you got this is not a bandit. Uh, some say they consider them an underdog to win the division because. He's got the Baltimore Ravens as well. That 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 reason why they were with the were because they weren't healthy. So the AFC North is, as far as we know, is still up for the grabs. And this will yeah. definitely be the a week to set the tone if you're either the Pittsburgh Steelers or the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, it'll be a good litmus test to see where you at the beginning of the year. And and like I said, whatever happens in week one, even if the Steelers win this game, it doesn't mean the Bengals are a flop or anything else like that. But I think with this being a, a division game beginning of the year, uh, a good litmus test. And, you know, since then, it's got to – you got to do what you got to do. I, I mean, in theory, the Steelers' the offense line struggled. Uh, Bengals could have a big advantage there. They just got to take advantage of it. And if they don't – you're going to keep the Steelers in the game, and you never know what might happen. Sure, sure. Uh, I think that... I think was also... I have a little mixed feelings about him, but I think my time to add in Brian Flores was also pretty, pretty yeah. um, a, good, a good pickup as well because he is a defensive-minded coach, uh, former coordinator, and obviously with a head coach with Miami Dolphins. Uh, I think that could be. I think he might be the guy who might bring the best out of Devin Bush, uh, just because Devin Bush has obviously people will say he hasn't really lived up to his first round status. So you just hope that uh, a Brian Flores, who was a linebackers coach with the New England Patriots, could bring the best out of him. Yeah, Devin Bush has been interesting so far in the preseason. He's had injury, which has hampered his play, uh, definitely. He's made some good plays where it looks like the old Devin Bush. He's made some plays where he's been really... uh, There's some viral videos you see on tweets where Devin Bush just is out of place. He's like staying there as guys run by him. Um, It'll be interesting to see. Uh, A lot of talk during the preseason. Hey, could the Steelers trade for a linebacker? It looks like that's not happening. But, you know... I mean, I'd, I'd give Devin Bush a chance. He got some young linebackers can even come in and play for him if he doesn't uh, play well. But, that, you know, that'll be another thing uh, to check out. So, um, predictions. I actually, on another podcast earlier, a couple, uh, month or two ago, I thought the Steelers could get the Bengals in this game. After seeing their offensive line, I think it's going to be closer than you think it'll be. I'd say Bengals 0 21 or 24 16. Uh, what would you say? It's definitely going to be close for sure. Um, I'm going to say I got the Bengals 27 27 14. Okay. Fair enough. Um, I'm a Steelers follower by trade, so I hope that doesn't happen. But I, I got to tell you, uh, Bing, Bengals look good. And, again, litmus test. You know, set, the, set the tone early on. Um, so, very good. Well, again, Peter, thanks for your time tonight. We appreciate that. Uh, again, uh, we have a Steelers podcast. Um, that's kind of who some of the guys behind the site like and follow. But this year, we wanted to definitely make sure we have Bengals, Browns, and Buckeye coverage. So, Peter, thanks for your help with that. Uh, Check out our our sponsor, Cash App. Uh, Check out YouTube TV. That'll be coming out 
uh, pretty soon too. Ways to save money. Peter's right. It costs a lot of money. We'll try to save you a little bit of money um, through our sponsorship with uh, YouTube TV. All right. For Peter, this is Chris. Thanks for checking out our show. Have a great night, everybody. Hi, I'm Jennifer Mooney. Welcome to what is our new Hope Interrupted podcast based on the work from our book, Hope Interrupted, that I co-authored with my good friend, Byron McCauley. Hey, Jennifer, you know, I'm looking forward to this podcast as much as I was look, looking forward to writing this book with you. We hope to interview some uh, high impact folks as well as have a little fun. We're going to cover stories of hope. To learn more about our podcast and our book, please visit www.hopeinterrupted.com.